This is the GoPro Hero 10. It can shoot more pixels at faster frame rates than ever before. But it's also bigger and heavier than it's ever been. So if you're a runner, is this new GoPro worth it? It's time to get this GoPro on a selfie stick and take it for a run. Eight point five zero miles, seven minutes, thirty two seconds per mile, one hundred and sixty beats per minute on average today. Going for a threshold workout six times, six minutes on and one minute off, and taking the GoPro Hero Ten with me for the run. Now, before I give my thoughts on this camera, and I'll be talking about a lot of different cameras today, I do want to go over some disclosures. Uh, this is a camera and all the GoPros that I have were purchased myself. No one sent them to me or is paying me to make this video, and no one's going to get a chance to preview any of my footage or my thoughts before you guys get a chance to see this video on YouTube. So with that disclosure out of the way, let's talk about the GoPro Hero 10 for runners. Now I'm trying to intentionally keep the scope of this video pretty narrow. I have a tendency to ramble on and I'm going to focus it on just two things running and also vlogging slash run vlogging as what I am using this camera for and we be looking at just that. So with that in mind, let's talk about some of the specs that are important to me. The biggest headline and the reason in and of itself for me to want to upgrade to the GoPro Hero 10 was that now we're getting 4K at 120 frames per second at all the different fields of view that GoPros can offer. So you can shoot at kind of like super wide, wide, linear, and narrow. I like to shoot at linear because I usually put my GoPro on a selfie stick. So I have enough distance between me and the camera typically uh, so that I don't have to resort to using wide or super wide. I do love a good fish eye lens and a good fish eye video, but I think for a lot of running content that I wanna make, especially since I'm doing product reviews, I do like to have the linear so there's no distortion in terms of kind of like what the product looks like. So that for me is huge because I like to run and I like to slow down my footage, put everything in slow motion. Uh, so that way having that 120 frames per second is a key part of what I do, being able to slow it down from 120 frames per second to 30 frames per second, getting that like one quarter speed slow motion uh, is like kind of like the secret behind like all the videos that get made on this channel. And I've had this for probably over a month now. Um, all my footage uh, from the GoPro has been at that 4K 120. And it's been very nice because now when I export out all my videos, uh, I can export them all out, unless I'm using a 360 camera, but all my GoPro videos, I can shoot uh, and render out at 4K because the talking head stuff that I do is at 4K. And now my running footage matches at 4K as well. So that for me is like the biggest headline. You're also getting a new chip that's inside the GoPro Hero 10. So like the brains behind this beast have now been upgraded as well. And I think that that is part of what enables all the spec jumps. From what I understand, the sensor in the camera between the GoPro Hero 9 and the GoPro Hero 10 are the same sensor. But now because of that new chip, we're able to unlock not only that 4K at 120, but we're also able to unlock the 5K at 60 frames per second. So sometimes when I do my regular daily vlogging, for the most part, I'm usually just gonna leave it at 4K 120, and that's kind of my set it and forget it resolution with the GoPro Hero 10. But if I'm gonna do some vlogging, that's when I might switch it to some of the higher resolutions because maybe I don't need 120 frames per second. A lot of times I'm talking to the camera or showing you guys what's going on in the world around me. And 60 frames per second at 5.3K, which is a bump from the 5K of the Hero 9, 5.3K at 60 frames per second, I think is a usable resolution and frame rate uh, for just general daily vlogging with the GoPro. And I think that it's been looking really nice. And before I get any further into the specs, let's take a look at some vlogging footage as well since we're talking about the 5K and that way we can talk about some of the other specs that go along with it. 
All right, what's going on guys? It is 4.30 in the afternoon, doing a little bit of some vlog testing with the GoPro Hero 10. 5K resolution, 60 frames per second. We're going to head over now to pick up some food at a new takeout place in the area. No, they got it's pizza, Epic it's called Epic Kitchens, but they got pizza, they got poke, Everything. they got burgers, they got fried chicken. chicken. So They got pizza too. Yeah, so lots of fun stuff. The kids are on their scooters and uh, we'll see what it's like to take this camera out for some vlogging in 5K. Guys, here it is. This is it. This is it right here. Wow, it looks cool. Yeah, it used to be a little Italian oh. deli before. Why don't you guys stay right here in the doorway? All right, that was super fast, super easy. Yeah. That's you guys ready to go back? Yeah. All right. Yeah, but it's nice to have the food ready for us. Right when we came in, awesome. So that was our evening trip, taking the kids on the scooters to go up to a new takeout restaurant in the neighborhood. The pizza was fantastic. That's probably the best thing that they make. The quinoa burger that I have, also very good. It comes with a special sauce, or you can add a special sauce to it that tastes remarkably like the sauce that goes on a Big Mac. So makes it pretty tasty. The kids really enjoyed the chicken strips and the macaroni and cheese was like, okay but hopefully you got a chance to see kind of like what the audio is like kind of walking around in vlogging mode and seeing what the 5.3k at 60 frames per second looks like whether i've slowed it down or whether i've just kind of put that 5k 60 and down resed it to 4k and 30 frames per second the other thing about the new chip that i definitely appreciate is that it's much faster to turn on and off the gopro hero 10. i normally set up all my gopros for a quick capture so that way instead of having to turn on the camera and then hit record i just hit the record button and then it automatically turns on to the last used video settings. That's a feature that's been available in GoPros for a while, but with the GoPro Hero 9, and maybe I'm comparing a year old battle tested, like worn out camera versus a brand new camera. And that certainly could be a part of it, but I'm getting substantially faster turn on and turn off times when I'm using quick capture. And I think for sure that it's gotta be the G2 chip that's in the Hero 10 that is making that all possible. But let's talk a little bit more in depth about how I feel about the GoPro Hero 10 for running. And specifically, I'm gonna talk about when I shoot at 4K and 120 frames per second. I would say that I don't think the image quality is all that much better. But what I do see is that I am able to get the same kind of footage that I was getting, but previously I was shooting at 2.7K at 120 frames per second, down it to 1080. Now I'm shooting at 4K 120 frames per second and rendering out at 4K and 30 frames per second. Now, if you're gonna look at it on devices that have higher resolution, like on a TV or like on an iPad, hopefully that's something that you're gonna be able to see. GoPro says that there's supposed to be better low light performance. I've put the GoPro Hero 10 through a couple of low light tests, like crazy, like low light torture tests. And I think that because I'm shooting them at 4K at 120 frames per second in kind of like the dark, uh, it's just as terrible as like ultra low light uh, performance has been in GoPros. But I would say in like regular, like camera speak low light, like shooting inside a car, shooting indoors, like we were eating at dinner, I do feel like the GoPro Hero 10 is doing a really good job. Is it substantially better than the Hero 9? I'm not sure, but 
as far as I'm concerned, it's close enough that I wouldn't say that the low light performance in and of itself is a reason to upgrade. Now let's talk about what I think about the vlogging footage that I've put together. I think that the audio is frequently perennially underrated in terms of how good kind of like noise and wind rejection is in the GoPros. I don't think that there's a substantial change or improvements in kind of like the audio from the nine to the 10. And I've been doing other vlogging and run vlogging footage. So I can give you some ideas on kind of sound uh, and like light performance. So I do have one where I was in the car and I do have one from the run footage that you saw today where I was running uh, by the water, but also by a pretty busy road, Lakeshore Drive here in Chicago. Uh, so lots of car noise. So you could check out that for the audio. Oh, guys, it is chilly out. It is like, it said, the car thermometer said it was 50 something degrees, but it was cold. I was talking to Luke at Heart, uh, Heartbreak. They've got a tent set up today. They're giving out some prize money for some of the winners. But um, he was just, he was just like, in like middle of my sentence, I guess I started shivering so much. And he was like, dude, you gotta go warm up. You gotta get out of here. Good morning, everybody. It is a little bit after 9 a.m. here on a Wednesday in Chicago. Temperatures are absolutely perfect for a workout today. On the menu, I've got mile repeats or mile repeats, six times, six minutes at threshold effort, with one minute rest. So that gives you an idea of what the audio sounds like if you're taking this out for a run. I also took the GoPro Hero 10 with me for the Chicago Marathon. So all the talking that I did to the camera there gives you what it might sound like in race conditions where there's crowds all around you. It was a windy day, all that kind of thing. So I'll give you another quick snippet of that now as well. All right guys, we are underway at the Chicago Marathon. Feeling good out here. Everyone's super excited. I'm a little bit behind 310 pace group, but I got him in my sights. Still so much race. Just gonna keep it nice and chill, not worry about anything for as long as possible. So whether you're run vlogging or just regular vlogging, I think that the GoPro Hero 10 here has seen a lot of spec bumps. I do like the image that I'm seeing at the 5.3K, shrinking that down to 4K. But again, I think that I will probably personally still just leave it at 4K 120 the entire time and linear. Uh, so that way, if I do see something that moves quickly and I wanna change speed, which is something that I love to be able to do, uh, that's something that I'll still have like the full kind of like flexibility of like real slow motion, 120 frames per second. So that's all the stuff that I've liked as far as running with the GoPro or vlogging with the GoPro. Now let's spend a little bit more time before we wrap up talking about the things that I think need some improvement when it comes to the GoPro. We've already talked about kind of like the ultra low light performance. Uh, it just doesn't get good, but you know, I may just be asking too much from like a physics perspective. I'm asking for a camera to capture 120 frames per second, 4K or 5K or even 2.7K uh, in conditions where there's just almost no light. So, you know, there are going to be limits when there is a camera body that's this small. But some of the other areas where I think that we definitely need to see improvement is I wanna see even better stabilization. Now, I think that GoPro stabilization is probably best in class, but I would love to see a little bit more. I'd like to see them push this G2 chip to see what it can do from an EIS perspective. I'd also would love to see optical image stabilization at some point. It's something that I've been asking from GoPro cameras to make for years. I don't know that we're ever going to see it, but that I think is another thing that is gonna enable the, this camera to just do that much more with less other stuff attached to it. So that's something that I still would wanna see is even better stabilization. The other thing that I think that we need to really address is the battery life. So we're pushing a lot more pixels. The chip is working a lot harder. Uh, I think that the battery life is not quite as good on the Hero 10 with a fresh battery than my Hero 9 with a year old battery. For the GoPro Hero 9, there was no Chicago Marathon last year, but other marathons that I ran with the GoPro Hero 9, I had no problems in terms of like worrying that I was gonna have enough battery life with the way I shoot to be able to have one battery and make it last the entire race. With the GoPro Hero 10, when I took it to the Chicago Marathon, 
I think I probably took even a little bit fewer clips than I might normally do. Um, but yeah, I, I ran out of battery by the time like the race was finished. Uh, I was able to get like crossing the finish line shot, thank goodness, but I didn't get really much more than that. So I just don't think that like the, the battery in terms of real life usage, given that I'm pushing it a little bit harder, is as good as it was on the Hero 9. So comparatively, I guess if I was doing like 2.7K at 120, one versus one, I, I might be able to see a bump in battery life, but as a practical matter in terms of how I'm using it, I have to be a little bit more careful and watch that battery meter just a little bit more. Now they're also saying that the cold weather performance is going to be better, but I really think that that better cold weather performance is because the camera does get really hot. Now I've seen a lot of people complaining about the camera overheating when you just have like a long continuous shot. I very rarely have those. So it hasn't been an issue for me, but I have noticed in the way that I use the GoPro that sometimes when I'm done, the camera itself is very, very hot. Overheating is something that has not been an issue for GoPros in the past. So it's something that I'm definitely a little bit concerned about. So those are the things that are really important to me as someone who runs with a GoPro and as someone who vlogs with a GoPro as well. So now let's talk about kind of my buying recommendations and the buying guide. So right now the GoPro Hero 10 comes in at $400. There's like a discount if you do a one year subscription. Um, to the GoPro subscription plan, is it plus or the GoPro plan? I forget what it's called. Um, we'll just use that number for now because it's gonna end up saving you money if you do that. So we'll go with 400 for the GoPro Hero 10. For $50 less, you can get the GoPro Hero 9. And for much less, you can get the GoPro Hero 8 at $280. So let's talk about if you have no GoPro at all, I think that if you have no GoPro, I would say either get the GoPro Hero 8 at that $280, it's an um, amazing, amazing price point. You might even be able to get it cheaper than that uh, if you get a refurbished one. My first GoPro was a refurbished one. It's something that I recommend to a lot of people to do to kind of dip your toe into the waters. But getting a new one at 280, I think you're getting a very capable camera. And it's also the lightest in the bunch of these three. The GoPro Hero 10 is getting really, really heavy. So I think that's a good option or go straight to the GoPro Hero 10 and you're gonna get kind of the best in class from what GoPro has ever made and also my favorite in terms of action cameras. If you have the GoPro Hero 8 already, I say, Go to the GoPro Hero 10. Your camera's a couple years old now, it's beat up. It's time to upgrade. You're really going to appreciate the upgrades to the GoPro Hero 10. And I would say if you're looking at the GoPro Hero 9 to buy as a new camera right now, I would say spend the extra $50 for the GoPro Hero 10. I do think that some of the other things like the faster processor, which allows you for faster turn on and off, uh, which is important in an action camera setting. And I do think having those bigger frame rates for an extra 50 bucks, definitely makes a lot of sense. If you have the GoPro Hero 9, unless you really need those high resolutions and higher frame rates, and I would say even I maybe don't need those higher frame resolutions and frame rates. If you've got the Hero 9, I'd say you don't necessarily need to get the Hero 10. Yes, the new chip is exciting. Yes, that 5.3K is interesting to use, but I don't think that these are huge jumps that necessitate you getting the GoPro Hero 10 right away. So hopefully that buying guide, those kind of like recommendations make sense to you. If you have any questions, feel free to put them in the comments down below or better yet, stop by the live stream they do Monday through Friday. I'd love to talk to you guys in the chat. That's all I have for today, everybody. Thanks so much for making it all the way to the end of the video. Hopefully you guys are staying safe out there on your runs and I'll see you in the next one. Yo, what's going on?